Just from recently watching some YouTube videos, I think there are some people that are confused regarding what cameras had the X-Trans sensor and what cameras did not. If you just do a, a quick Wikipedia here, and I'm not doing anything I'm not doing anything groundbreaking here, I'm just going to the website, you can see that, okay, fine, so this is a typical Bayer sensor uh, filter array, and then this is the X-Trans. There's a lot more green photo receptors there, larger as well, but if you go, uh, down here you'll know you'll see that the first cameras that had the first version of the x-trans sensor are the x pro one the xe one xm one so you do not see the x100 listed in here the original x100 camera actually had a, a cmos bayer sensor array and not an x-trans so if you're looking to pick up an old uh, retro X100, just you know, take keep that in mind. Uh, you're not getting the X-Trans sensor in there. I believe that means it had a, a low-pass filter in it. So, and I originally had an X, X100 as well. And I, I do notice um, when I did have it that the images are just uh, generally softer because it has that, uh, that filter in there. But in the X-Trans, uh, it's not really needed. X-Pro1, XE1, XM1 had the first generation X-Trans sensor at 16 megapixels. Then we're looking at the X-Trans 2, which is the majority of the cameras here. So the X100S, EX2, XT1, very popular, X100T, super popular, XT10, popular. So all these cameras, X70. And then uh, there was, I guess, two versions. I, I actually didn't know this, but the uh, these particular ones, the X X20, Q1, X30, XQ2 had a lower resolution version of the X-Trans sensor and a smaller sensor size. I never owned these these cameras, never even touched one in my life actually. So this this part, this portion here of the X-Trans 2 generation. And then of course the X-Trans 3, which is X-Pro2, X-T2, X100F, and X-T20. So just a little bit of clarification there on the uh, sort of history on the X-Trans sensor and what cameras actually had them. The X100, the original X100 did not. Here, it's funny how when we're looking at this wiki page, how it says a drawback for users is a lack of support for the X-Trans sensors in third-party raw processing software. Uh, DSO Optic, this is probably at the time this was being written, does not support raw files and Fujifilm cameras with X-Trans sensors because they are proprietary. Demosaicing and image enhancement algorithms are designed for the Bayer matrix. I don't know if that's still true or not. I don't go to DxO Mark or anything like that. Under certain conditions, cameras equipped with X-Trans 2 and 3 can exhibit purple flare grid artifacts in backlit photos. This occurs due to the particular arrangement of the phase detection and masking layers on the sensor. The appearance of the effect can vary with demosaicing algorithms in use. Well, this might be a good explanation of what the X-Trans sensor actually is trying to do. It's so Fujifilm have adopted an innovative in, in a, Fujifilm have adopted an innovative color filter array that eliminates the need for an optical low-pass filter. This revolution revolutionary sensor achieves new heights and resolution quality and color reproduction and delivers brilliant optical performance from every lens. Sorry, moray occurs when two regular patterns overlap and interfere with each other, creating a pattern that does not exist in reality. This is a common problem in cameras using conventional bear arrays where the regular pattern of the sensor clashes with the pattern being captured. So repeated regular pattern, bear array, moray at high and high resolution. Optical low pass filters reduce the moray noise, but overall the resolution of the captured image. So yeah, you can see much sharper up here without a low pass filter. And with the low pass filter, it just gives it that little bit of, uh, you know, not as sharp, un less sharp. Let's just say that. Moray is not an issue with traditional film due to the ir irregular size and layout of the particles. Again, repeated regular pattern with film, no issue. So here comes the X trans. So learning from our experiences of traditional photography, we arranged a pattern of red, green, and blue photo sites on the surface of the Fuji X trans sensor in a more random manner than in conventional bare array sensors. This minimizes moiré effects to the point that the X pro one does not need a low pass filter, which in turn boasts, sorry, boosts resolution and sharpness, probably boasts as well. Oh, that would work. 
uh, without using an on optical low pass filter more is limited while preserving the high end resolution so there's a repeated uh, sort of pattern there's the x trans array versus the conventional bear array you can see the two uh, green photo sites there cross uh, diagonal from each other and you can see how the pattern is much different here just a different design really and then we have the X-Trans CMOS uh, 6x6. Here we go. So the 6x6 pixel pattern also ensures that color reproduction is better than that if achieved with an ordinary bare array. All horizontal and vertical lines contain at least one RGB pixel, whereas bare arrays do not have R and B in some lines, resulting in false color reproduction. So that's it. So this was obviously for the introduction of the X-Trans sensor in the X-Pro1. So there's some background info there. So just don't get confused on what has what generation of sensor in there. I know it's pretty obvious, but you know, someone that might not know might pick up an X-Pro1 and say, oh, it has an X-Trans. Yeah, but what generation X-Trans was it? Um, because I do have an X-Pro2 and an X100S. I'm planning to get my hands on an X-Pro1, so I'll have all three, all three generations of the X-Trans sensor to do more testing.